Session 3 Soft Skills Body Language What is Body Language? Body Language is the communication of personal feelings, emotions, attitudes, thoughts through body movements that is gestures, postures, facial expressions, walking styles, positions and distance either consciously or involuntarily that is it's not only your tongue you communicate with but also you speak with your body movements and gestures so body language is the unspoken element of communication that we use to reveal our true feelings and emotions our gestures facial expressions and posture for instance when we are able to read their signs we can use it to our advantage. For example, it can help us to understand the complete message of what someone is trying to say us and to enhance our awareness of people's reactions to what we say and do. We can also use it to adjust our body language so that we appear more positive, engaging and approachable. So, how to use this body language and how to understand whether the body language is trying to communicate in a positive manner or in a negative manner. So, being aware of negative body language in others can allow you to pick up on unspoken issues or bad feelings. So, in this particular aspect, we can highlight some negative non-verbal signals that you should look out for. So, the first part of this that is gestures. So, a gesture is the verbal or non-verbal body movement used to express or emphasize an idea, an emotion or state of mind. So, gestures can be of a different nature. It is an expressive movement of part of a body, especially hand or head. It has vital effect or part in oral communication. Gesture of a person convey much more than what he speaks, particularly the deaf and dumb person depend upon gesture for communication. So, hearing for impaired is a good example where the uh, events or the news is being telecasted in such a manner through gestures it is being communicated to people who are deaf and dumb. So, that is the best way of communication where it can reach the masses particularly people who are having the problem of hearing and speaking and waving of hand to indicate goodbye or draw the attention of a person also part of gesture shaking hands display the friendship and shrugging of shoulders indicates indifference and unconcern pointing index finger indicates allegation or charge that means if a person is trying to pinpoint someone it can be either to identify or to find fault and thumbs up sign indicates wishing good luck. So, in the modern scenario, if you see, uh, thumbs up is being used at large, uh, mainly uh, in uh, social media and uh, it is trying to express one's feeling or opinion saying that best of luck or a job is done. So, it is more connected to positive sign or symbol expressing a particular emotion. Next, stretching the hands and uh, lying the hands on a desk clearly indicates the attitude or position of a body. So, if a person is trying to put the weight on the table while addressing people either in a meeting or in a gathering, it is trying to see that the person is trying to show some attention. So, each 
so it is trying to say that each movement of body has an expressive and defensive functions the way in which we sit or stand walk in a walk out tells a lot about us a good posture indicates confident attitude so sitting in a relaxed way or in a stiff mode expresses a different options so which we can see from the pictures that is being displayed example in the classroom teacher observes students interest by the sitting and attendance the posture of indian gods and goddesses have special images so the way the pictures are being framed or the pictures are particularly the paintings are drawn so it is trying to convey some message as far as the posture is concerned the calm and cool effect and uh, how the blessings are being showered lazy people sit idly and active people always are energetic so this is as far as the gestures are concerned so different type of gestures are there and the body movement used to express the um, emphasis or the idea or even the emotion or state of mind of a person can be understood next body movements this includes the head eyebrows eyes lips neck shoulders fingers and so on so one can distinguish four main kinds of gesticulation that is emblem illustrators regular and self touching so as far as body movements are concerned all facial expressions on human face indicates facially expressive message there are they are actually um, it can be classified into various categories and these are hair forehead eyebrows eyes mouth chin nose lips ears teeth tongue etc facial expressions come naturally hence it is beyond the control of a speaker it is easily visible when the speaker expresses joy sorrow and anger example a smile expresses friendliness and affection raised eyebrows convey surprise furrowed forehead and forehead express worry and anxiety frown shows dislike or suspicion and the dress and appearance also play a major role so that means the dress attire one who uh, looks at or one who applies so that can easily indicate that what sort of personality or what sort of uh, attitude a person is trying to carry so the kind of dress we use and the way in which we groom ourselves show our status and attitude we influence how others look and the clothes they wear physical attractiveness plays an important role in our assessment of people a person's dress and physical appearance conveys great deal of information about him example a black dress indicates a person's ill or cruel attitude while white dress stands for purity which indicates whereas pure sincere attitude so how they are able to connect and how they are able to express and uh, even we can say that they would like to maintain certain sort of discipline eye contact as very much in face to face communication in fact eye contact plays a major role the direction with which it is being used so conveys the confidence or the state of mind of the speaker absence of eye contact shows lack of interest and understanding we look faster than listen or talk so when we have some information to pass on so our eyes will be faster enough when compared to the words that 
we are trying to utter. So, whether it is a meeting or a gathering or it is a, a lecture inside a classroom, so we can understand that eye contact has more role to play when compared to the oral communication. Since the eyes are moving around, it can easily connect to each and every one in the hall or in the classroom. Eyes are human windows. Without them, there is no life. Exactly. So, we can say that eyes play a major role and only when eyes are looking at a person or a group of persons, then the attention can be brought in. So, if we want to maintain silence, where a one-way communication has to take place, or where some important information has to be passed down. So, attention is very important. So, there eye contact plays a major role. So, without eye contact, if you are trying to communicate, whether it is reaching people 100% is a big question. The speaker must look into the eyes of the audience, so which is very important, and from right to left and right, left to right and so on. And this will build up, build up the confidence and eliminate the fear or nervousness. It builds the rapport between the speaker and the listener. So, when you are trying to look at people through the eyes, so when it is repeatedly done and the number of times you are able to look at a person and uh, if the person shows the interest, then the relationship begins. It builds the rapport between the speaker and the listener. So, sometimes the listener may be in a position to raise question when he or she is really interested in the um, topic or the content what is being delivered. Silence is something of great importance and uh, speech is silver but silence is golden. It establishes so, the relationship between the communications either confused or the other way. Moments of silence. Uh, do not know how to continue to stress some points. So, when certain points are to be expressed and those points might be there in the mind and if a person is unable to express it, maybe due to fear or the nervousness, then silence play a major role. So, moment of silence definitely expresses some meaning. So, not necessarily that it should be nervousness, even it could be that some unhappiness or the person wants to be silent to ensure that there is no conflict or there is no quarrel or argument, not ready for argument. So, for those reasons, the moment of silence can be carried on. So, do not know how to continue to stress some points or sometimes unable to dominate. And next is voice modulation. So, as part of body language, voice modulation also play a major role. The speaker must use his voice effectively. So, someone wants to become an effective speaker, a good voice is a must particularly how to modulate the voice according to the situation, whether to raise the voice or to reduce the voice is very, very important. And a good voice is a natural gift. One can take the training of phonetics to improve his own voice. So, if the person is really concerned about getting trained or increasing or decreasing the tone, so it is better to get the training of phonetics which will improve the quality of voice and suppose if the speaker or the person is having a problem of cracked voice or a low voice or low tone. So, all these things can be overcome when undergoing a training. So, that will help them to improve their quality of speech or voice.